So here's the thing, you're rendering your scene and you can hear there's a thunderstorm coming and you need to stop your render and it's been rendering for a few hours. So let's suppose this is a very long winded render. What can you do? Well, if you click anywhere on this grey area out here, it'll suspend the render and you can still resume it with this button here. And as it happens, if you suspend the render and then just go file and save and then just save your file when you go back to that you should be able to relaunch that file and it resume its render so we'll see whether that expected behavior uh, is shown okay right so I'll just launch this file again it'll take a moment and what we should see is it loads it in sets itself going without any further input from us so let's go here we go you see it's resumed so that's great so if we know we need to turn the computer off then you can save the file and reload and it will continue there is a hidden drawback but it's probably one which isn't going to affect most people and that is if you wanted to export this render when it was completed as um, one of the higher resolution color formats or HDRI formats, you would have lost that data that was necessary. You only retain the image, not the data that's uh, currently suspended in the render, which is destroyed when the file is saved and reloaded. So on the in the situation where you need to get the all the color data out of the render for a high resolution uh, export then you can't use this approach in fact there's no approach you can use other than to have a, a UPS uh, an uninterruptible power supply to allow you to complete the render in one go uh, which leads us to the next question what happens if you don't know that Bryce is going to be interrupted but you have a very large render that's going to take many hours to complete. Now I had a render which was uh, 500 hours in and I had a power cut. At that time I was rendering it to disk so in, there's an option here under file render to disk and that allows you to render your file to the hard drive. You just give it a name it doesn't really matter what and uh, it's that's the name that the files saved under but it doesn't really matter so and then it, you see this little progress bar and in the event of this being interrupted, sometimes the file it's produced is corrupted and sometimes you'll get a partial render, but this render completes from the top down. So what I had after I had the power cut was three quarters of the render. So I was able to go to the file, mask off the top half of my render, complete the bottom half and then compose the two bits together. But I'm not recommending this approach because, as I'll demonstrate now, if I... Um, go to this and kill its process so just end its process um, and then we'll have a look at the file that's been left you see it just ended up corrupt there so that didn't work so there'd be nothing to recover from this so that's maybe not the best approach to trying to get a really large render piecemeal so another strategy you could employ is you could use a plot render and plot render part of it like so so we'll give we'll render this bit and we'll see that it, if it, let's assume it manages to complete without uh, without crashing without there being a power cut so you can see that this this bit's taking a little bit of time to do you need to let this complete itself then save this file and then you can then plot render the next bit and just work your way down the image in whatever sections you think you can get away with before you have a power cut until you've managed to complete the image so we'll just let this bit um, complete itself then I'll save it and then I'll show you how even though it's got this box on when you put the plot render on and you control the plot renders from this little uh, icon here so if you find you can't get the plot render to come up you need to activate it there so it just completes here and obviously the anti-aliasing pass is uh, because of the high level of detail in this part of the model this is the Moongate by Jack Tomlin 
that I've just put in front of one of uh, Horror's high resolution terrains here to create a little example scene. There we go. So, file, just save that. We'll take a moment to save. And then we'll, we'll work on the basis that, that things have been interrupted. So, we're not continuing from the, the same file and we'll see what happens. That's the important thing that you're able to resume. So, we'll work, we'll, we'll work on the assumption that uh, we're going to plot render another bit like so. We'll make it a small segment. I'll turn the plot render off then. Do you see that? Fool. Okay. Um, and at this point the program's interrupted so that doesn't get saved. So we have to go back to our previously saved version which will take a moment to load. And at this point we should be able to just outline our area and continue down the image rendering a bit out at a time. So you can see it's not resumed its render so it's not overwritten what we've already plot rendered. You can see it's got that far so I just plot render there and then I can render that bit, save the file and then render the next bit and work my way down the image that way. And so if at any point it's interrupted I can go back to my saved file which is recorded my progress and uh, and continue so there's two ways of continuing there now one in which where you know you're going to interrupt it means that you can render you just start the render as you normally would then interrupt the render by clicking you know on the interface somewhere but don't click any of these buttons obviously because that will change its behavior go to file save the file when you reload the file it'll resume the rendering process otherwise if you don't know your render is going, you know, when your render is going to be interrupted, you can work your way down the image using the plot render. So, I suppose finally, the other consideration is what happens if your image is larger than the display, so you can't place your plot render pl properly. So, if we we'll go to File Document Setup and just uh, take this up so it's bigger than my display space, so let's go. There you go. So I can't get to the top now. Then uh, when you if just hit render and then use the minus key here and you can shrink down the rendered image rather than shrink down the wireframe and then you can place your um, a plot render view there and render that bit and we'll go file and save our progress. And then when you load it in we'll have to do a little bit of a navigation again because it will uh, it'll probably forget this setting if I know anything. So just take a moment to save. I can bring this file up to show you what it looks like. So that's uh, at the full size. So it's not rendered small like that. That's not uh, not the issue. So I'll I'll launch this file again and we'll see what happens. Because obviously it's its launch behavior that's critical. You don't want it to suddenly start overwriting, deciding that you just wanted to render the whole thing, because then you'd lose what you'd already plot rendered. Obviously saving with incremental file names is probably the best approach. So here we go. You can see how far we've got. So you'd have to go minus there. Then you could plot render in your next section. So speaking of saving with incremental names, if you use a file name with a number on the end and go file and save as, Bryce will automatically increment that number for you. So that's a good way uh, and it's, uh, it's good practice when you're building a scene or rendering scenes out to uh, to use that so that you, you end up with a lot of files, yes. But you can always delete the ones up to the final file if you're running short on disk space. So I would recommend doing that as well in all these instances. So I think that's, uh, I think that's covered more or less everything that you might need to know about trying to render a large image bit by bit and the plot render does come in useful uh, for example here you go if that's grayed out when you've gone to that it's because it's still rendering um, be a bit careful if you're if you're rendering and uh, then you start doing something like this and then go back to rendering because that if you interrupt its render while you've been messing in this menu it can sometimes cause a crash so just be a bit wary of that. Try to make sure you stop it rendering just by clicking, you know, in this grey area or on somewhere on the interface, but not on a button, and then go to the file menu. Just be on the safe side. 
so what was I saying? Oh, document setup. I'm just going to set this back down to um, within our view. Okay. So if you if you rendered all this out and it's going to take a while and you needed to adjust something, but it was only something local, don't forget you can always just render that small area and then save it. It saves you having to render the entire scene. Obviously, if you've got reflective objects in your scene, then that can be a bit of an issue uh, because it might the reflection might change from the thing that you've modified in your scene but uh, there you go that's a way of uh, dealing with large long renders that um, that might be interrupted or that you wish to interrupt yourself if you wanted to use your computer to do something else okay then. cheers now